the field has evolved so rapidly. Um, and so I think one of the challenges is, is again, is making sure that everybody understands what are the technologies available at each center um, and what are those limitations? So for example, um, if the goal is to give a, a more of an ablative dose or high dose of radiation therapy, a dose that is thought to have a potential to sterilize the tumor, even if can't, if the surgery, uh, if, if the tumor cannot be removed surgically, um, then again, it goes to what type of technology, what type of machine does the, does the center have? What kind of experience does the radiation oncology and the team inclusive of dosimetry and physics and the therapist, what kind of experience do they have in delivering a higher dose of radiation therapy? Because as you go to a higher dose, while it's beneficial for the tumor, it also can potentially increase the risk of causing a toxicity such as, you know, an ulcer to the, to the bowel um, and or, uh, you know, other complications. Um, so I think it's really important to take all those things into account. Um, and then, and then I think the other, the other aspect of this is that, you know, what type of onboard imaging does the center have? So do they have really, you know, sort of uh, newer cone beam technology that allows you to see the tumor again, as well as normal tissue in real time when you're delivering the radiation, or is there MR capability with some of the newer machines that allow you to not only see the tumor, but be able to do what's called adaptive planning in real time, where you can, if the anatomy is different, you can quickly shift, replan the radiation, and, and that way it's it's much more personalized in real time. Um, and, and again, in theory, that should allow you to give a higher dose to the tumor and limit the toxicity as much as possible to normal structures.